wealth within. They gave me that feeling of trust. What you learned in the course was just mind-blowing. Amazing. It was phenomenal. It opens your mind up and makes you realise you don't know what you don't know. I've got the tools now. 100% worth it. Definitely get educated. Hello and welcome to Wealth Within's weekly hot stock tips. I'm Philip Tortevsky, Senior Analyst at Wealth Within, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Every Tuesday night, you can see me on the Australian Stock Market Show, live on YouTube, alongside two amazing professional traders, Janine Cox and Dale Gillam. Now in the show, we answer important questions around the stock market, cover lots of great stocks, and help you become a better trader. Today, we'll unveil what's hot and what's not for you, our viewers. But before we dive into this week's stocks, I am joined today by Dale Gillam. Good morning, Dale. Oh, good morning. What a fantastic week we've had. Yes, very interesting yeah. volatility has mm. been quite subdued in Australia anyway, given the big news Donald Trump yeah. is the new president-elect. Well, we've got dancer. certainty now, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> Don't know what kind of future it is, but it's, we've got yes, certainty. Yes. At least we know who the president's going to be. Yep. And I think the market gets nervous when they have uncertainty. Well, I, I know the market yep. is always, it, it gets lacklustre lack um, mm -hmm. when, when there's no direction, I suppose, if that makes sense. And, and uncertainty, now we've got certainty, we can plan. Yeah, and I mean, to me, what's been interesting is obviously we've seen stock markets, um, you mm. know, rebound nicely from that news. We've seen gold come off a little bit, which mm. is not unsurprising given yeah. the fact that, you know, he is looking to bring stability to the world from Interest that Interest rates are coming down in the US again and yep. you know, we won't get them down until February, maybe March next year. But yes. um, that's my tip anyway. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see them go down before the end of the year, which is disappointing, but hey. It's all looking awesome today. All right, so let's get straight into it on your screen right now. Is a watch list of the top 200 ASX stocks. So, I mean, starting off the list, obviously, Neuron Pharmaceutical Sigma, you know, two pharma companies, not surprising they've jumped up oh. like that, to be honest. Um, Tabcorp finding its feet. Obviously, this one's been mm. experiencing huge falls, uh, as you can see on that chart. So be cautious of looking at a one-week rise of about 39%. But as we go through the list, Quite interesting. We've got you know quite a lot of pharma stocks, which is um, uh, quite interesting in itself. A few tech players like Wise Tech, the big players coming through. A few news companies as well, um, yeah. media companies that you know I'm, I'm looking. Okay, that's quite interesting. Um, and then AMP is the one to me that hey, it's starting to be in the green quite a bit. This I'm month. actually starting to like AMP, and I never <laughs> thought I'd say that. Yeah. Like I haven't liked it since its inception. Yes, you know it's been one of those stocks mm. that perennially disappoints you. Yes. Um, but hey, it's looking better and now it's a lot more safer than what it was a couple of years ago. So yeah, it's not looking too bad, but that list looks good, doesn't it? It does, it does. It's across the board, which is quite nice. And what I would like to see now, given, you know, obviously the policy of Donald, um, he's been very vocal about the fact that uh, the miners and, you know, the, the fossil fuel space is going to be um, looked after, if you will, over the next four years. So I would like to see our miners start to come through because we do have exposure in the US with some of our biggest players, BHP, Rio, yep. Oz, and all that kind of stuff. So once they get, can get going, it'll be a very nice boost to our market to see it run out through to the end of the year, get that Christmas rally. But moving to the worst performers for the week, no surprise again, gold players, um, you know, given what he wants to do, cause that stability around the world. That flight to safety, that uncertainty is going to be taken out of the market. Uh, if you will, we're already seeing it with money flowing out of gold and gold stocks, which, you know, you can see obviously uh, West African, Bellevue, um, Gold Road Resources, or Emerald, potentially Ramelis, um, all through there, West Gold. Uh, so not surprising at all. Mineral resources mm, still. Not surprising. Yeah, that's been, you know, yo yo -y, but again, you know, in a huge downtrend. No, so be. Deep Yellow, Uranium, Paladin. Northern yeah. Star. So be weary, yeah. Basically, the what message surprised is me was A2 Milk, though. To me, I'm mm. look. I actually like that stock, and I mean, down seven point five three percent last mm. week, and so mm. it is a little volatile. I mean, with with A2 Milk, what's interesting? It's caught sideways right now. Mm. So value is stuck between seven and three fifty, and it's just ranging sideways. So at some point, mm. you know, this stock will break out back into trend, hopefully above that eight dollar mark, but. You know, it's probably waiting really to see some kind of catalyst to get it going a bit higher at the moment. Well, I mean, obviously, if China is you know, recovering, if that makes sense, and expanding, then you think A2 milk would start to take off because mm. it, it, a big market for it is, is China. Yes. But hey, you know, anything's possible, isn't it? Time I mean, will tell. You know, it depends on obviously the tariffs that 
Trump is well, that too. looking to put onto a lot of imported goods, which includes China, which is the yep. biggest importer into the US. I mean, we don't do too much trade with the US in terms of how much we send to them. Yep. It's very small um, and vice versa. It's not a huge thing, but I know, and I know a lot of people are surprised that, you know, looking at investment in Australia, that people think China is number one. Well, it's not. Yeah. The US is number one, UK is number two, and China's three or four down the track. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to see the reality of what's happening on the market right now. If China is starts to come out and starts mm. to build more things, then it'll work for Australia. Mm. And who has more influence on our market anyway? But so what's hot in the market this week? Well, on your screen right now is my hot stock tip for the week, which is Bank of Queensland stock ticker code BOQ. So on your screen right now, are the monthly and weekly charts. Now, I want to zoom out here, Dale. Firstly, start off the monthly. Again, a banking stock. You know, the banks have been flying recently. Well, the second tier banks are looking great, aren't they? Aren't they? You know, the value, because obviously, when you look at things like CBA, trading all time highs at 150, you probably mm. think, okay, sure, there might still be long term value growth uh, in that stock. But when you look at these second tier stocks that have been languishing the market, and particularly this one here, I mean, this rectangle box that I've drawn around five to six dollars has been a major level of support dating back from 2009. You can see it's really been, you know, the catalyst or, or the price level where buyers have soaked it up and sent it running on higher. We've come back in again recently, November 2023. What's the exciting part for me is that we haven't managed to take out the yeah. April 20 low. That COVID low has signaled, you know, significant um, a point or turning point in the market given by this heavy buying that we saw through there. The nature of it being so sharp, I was, it wasn't surprising that it was gonna pull back. But the fact that it's pulled back in terms of like since September 2021 to November 23, it's almost pulled back twice the amount of time that it's gone to rise up and now broken through and given us that really nice un uniform type of rise, higher, high, higher, low, not euphoric like this period through here. So that to me speaks that, hey, this is a real opportunity to potentially get involved in this kind of stock if it's going to give that long-term growth. And, you know, with, with the way things are heading, obviously, um, in, in, in financial markets and with the banking sector, you know, real still really leading the charge to the higher interest rate environment, it does support these uh, stocks definitely um, for price growth. So oh, I, look, it does, you know, with interest rates. I mean, these are a bit more affected by the RBA interest rates yeah. because they're not, you know, the highest rated in terms of their, their uh, rankings, if mm. that makes sense. So it costs them a bit more money to, to get the money to lend out. But you know the way the market is at the moment, and I think if interest rates do start to to drop, these banks will start doing better because we're seeing some of these more obscure banks doing a lot better, you know, than the big four banks. A lot of people are like, eh, I'm not getting the service. I might as well go where the deals are. Yeah, better and deals. Yeah, they're better deals than some of all these second tier banks and and the other ones, you know. And I'm not thinking like your judo banks and yeah. some of these ones. I go, wow, what? I've never heard of this one. Yes. Um, but there's more of them coming up every day. But I do like this stock. I think it's looking great. But it also proves why you shouldn't buy and hold. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's like 20 years, you're still at the same price if you yeah. bought and hold. Yeah. You know? 1995 and we're in nearly 2025, and you're still at the same price, roughly. Yeah, I, I mean, that argument to me is so so crazy. We, mm. we, you know, we see it because we get to look at the charts every day. We look yes. at the market, and we have seen so many, so many opportunities that, hey, if mm. you just had some simple rules around getting in and getting out, you would have made a ton load more than buying and holding. And, you know, it's, it's not that hard, but yeah. at the end of the day, the real skill comes in selling, yep. knowing when to sell. That's when you're really going to be able to compound and look capitalize. From, look from 2002, you yeah. made 300% in the next one run. And then you go and look later on, there's another 100% run yes. over a two, couple of years. So it's like it does run. Even AMP doubles in price over a year or so before it falls away again or had. Now it's looking a lot better, but yes. it was doing that. And so these stocks will do, so good stocks will do that. But by and holding them for 10, 20, 30 years, where you come right back to the same price, yeah, I don't, I'm not subscribing to that theory. No, me neither. Let's just go to the weekly chart before we wrap this one up. And I just wanted to bring up the fact that even from the shorter term perspective, because I mean, look, we've come out of this low. Mm. What's really nice, we're seeing buyer activity, we're seeing seller activity matching that. We're rising in a general gradient. But what I really like is this recent move that happened, obviously, in October 2024. Right at the extension of this uptrend, we're at new prices and we're seeing heightened buyer activity. That is what you want to see. You don't want to see buyers slowing down as we're reaching the higher highs. And we've come in with a really nice volume spike as well, supporting that buying. We've pulled back about half of that and we've already reversed. So you've got a lot of things from a technical perspective in this short to medium term saying, hey, 
This wants to go higher, so keep a very close eye on this one for future opportunities. But anyway, that is it for my hot stock tip. Now we're moving on to a stock that should make you proceed with caution. Telstra Limited stock ticker code TLS. Now, I know this one, Dale, is um, one that we joke Another about often. Another annoying stock, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for years, I call it DOG, not Telstra. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because it fell away for 10 years. But again, it, to me, this is a long-term uptrend. It's just taking a while to get going. Correct, correct. You know, at the moment, it's you know, even like last week, if you look at it, it was a nice, strong week last week. Um, but it still came off its high to trade down ne to nearly half of what it rose during the week. So, mm -hmm. you know, if it stays up, I like it. But, you know, to me, this is another stock you don't buy and hold. And it just shows you, a lot of people say to us, oh, you know, I can't afford your education, you know. Well, yeah. But ignorance is much more expensive. <laughs> and, and people don't understand that. It's like, well, to get a good education, you'd know when to buy this stock and when not to buy it mm. and, and how to make those 100% rather than do the roller coaster. But a lot of people don't appreciate that. Yeah, and when somebody says that, well, what's your alternate option? And, yeah. and your alternate option is you go into the market and you let the market teach you its lessons. Well, you're going to pay for your education one way or other, yeah, whether the market teaches you or you pay for good education. Correct. And at the end of the day, what you're going to get from the market teaching you is not education because you're going to walk away not knowing what you should be knowing because how do you know what you don't know? Yes. And so you're going to cop a whacking in terms of your finances, but you're not really going to walk out at the end of the day with a solid set of skills for you to be able to tack tackle yeah. the market profitably. Well, you also lose time and you also lose well, opportunity as well. So not yeah. just maybe not making good returns mm. or average returns, but you're losing a lot of profit that you could be yeah. making and a lot of time and then you can't compound. So let's go and have a look at the chart anyway because I yeah. do like Telstra, but I do understand why it's a caution. Yeah, and to me, I mean, what's really exciting is obviously if we just zoom out on the monthly chart, we've really found a strong base around this $2.70 level. You know, it's mm. bounced three times. To me, you want to see that with stocks uh, in these long-term accumulation phases coming out of huge contraction. We're bouncing sideways, but what's quite interesting is that it's always nice to see when stocks are starting to accept higher prices. Now, yeah. if I zoom it through here, you can see that the previous level which price was accepted was around August 19, 390. We've jacked above there on multiple occasions, and now we're hovering around $3.90. We're not really seeing sellers um, you know, dismiss this price level, which no. to me is quite important. If we do take out the previous high of, where are we here, September 2024, that'll give me real strong confirmation that this is some kind of significant low in the market. And from a weekly perspective, what adds to that theory is that we've come in with huge volume here. Yep. When you see huge volume on a huge bar down in terms of volatility and price then reverse, that's telling you that, hey, this is more likely than a flush out rather than real strong selling because we've reversed all the way up. So. I really, whilst it's a caution to me, and watch particular price levels through here around $4, if you will, if I can get my horizontal line to work today. If we can get through this level here, $4.06, that'll be a very nice level to be watching this stock for further upside in the short to medium term. To me, it's just confidence. Yeah. And you know, once we get through that $5 level, yeah. so obviously through the $4, but got yep. to get through $5, then people will start taking notice of it. When yeah. people start taking notice of it, they'll start putting money into it and then the, the trend will keep going. So yeah. I do like it, as, but I do understand the caution. All right, well, moving on lastly, what's not hot in the stock market this week? BWP Trust, stock ticker code BWP. So let's get into the charts right now. Well, On the screen, yes. I mean, and, and I know why you're saying wow, because you know our students will know this from a technical perspective. Oh, it's just like as soon as, as soon as I, half a second I go, yep. Time to sell. Time to sell. You yeah. Know, and not be, and you, well, you shouldn't have been in the stock in the first place. Yeah. But shorting um, perspective, this is a, a nice opportunity. It's shorting stock. And this is where understanding patterns in time and price, you just look at a stock in half a second or, you know, two seconds, and you go, poof. Yeah. You know, if you've got the knowledge and the experience, you just can see that straight away. And I'm yes. not saying that I'm some fantastic, you know, obscenely amazing trader. It's just having the right knowledge and some skills, you know, that you can go, wow. Yeah. Like well, I, well, you've been in it long yeah. enough to know what's what. And you, yeah. you, what, what's interesting about these patterns is that mm. they consistently repeat time and time again. I they mean, do. you've been in the markets, what, 40 years? No, uh, 30. Don't make me that old. Oh, okay. 30 <laughs> years. But, but, you know, how often have you seen these patterns form? That oh, it comes a point in time where you time. say to yourself, hey, yeah. th this can't be, you know, this ain't random. You see these patterns form so much in the market. Mm. And it's purely just a representation of what is happening between buyers and sellers. Just on a very basic level, you're seeing that, hey, look how much buyers are struggling to send this price higher. It's rising 
ticking up above a high, then mm. falling all the way back down. Ticking above another high, then falling all the way back down. No real strength in buying. Following a huge sell-off, that to me looks like a huge compression, and we're going to see huge volatility on the breakout to the downside. So, you know, a stock to stay away from. Well, look, I totally agree, but you know, to me, getting back to your point, for 30 years I've been getting people in my face being sceptical of stuff that mm. we teach, going, well, you know, you're just using perfect example. I go, no, the more you do it, the more you realise <laughs> it happens. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what the rule and what the strategy is, and you get these, can I say, sceptical people. For and, sure. And, you know, you can be sceptical, but then you get some real cynics going, well, you know, and I've had them right up in my face going, well, that doesn't work. And I go, no, it just means you don't know how to work it. Yeah. You would never understood it properly because it does work. And we get... Occasionally we'll get the comments on our YouTube channel yeah. going, boy, you can't trade that way. And I go, well, yeah, you can. Yeah. You just don't know how to do that. Yeah. And whether it's options, CFDs, FX, or whether it's short, medium, long-term trading, yeah. whether whatever it is, the person making the comment is, the, is ignorant. And I'm not trying to be rude to anybody, but knowledge is the enemy of fear. Yeah. Once you have the knowledge, you can trade stocks like this. But right now, this is making like like smack over your head with a piece of fish. You know it's going to go down. Yeah, You yeah. don't have to think about it. Yeah. You know it's going down. Well, you said it perfectly one time. I mean, you said prove it. If, if, prove if, it. If, if you think it doesn't work, prove it. Prove, um, it. And, prove it right, prove it wrong, yeah. but just prove it. Yeah. And but don't just say it's wrong because somebody else has told you yeah. that, You know, which is what a lot of people do. They mm. go, that doesn't work. I go, well, have you used it? And 99% of the time they go, no. And I go, then how do you know mm -hmm. that it doesn't work unless you prove it works or prove it doesn't work? Prove me right, prove me wrong, whatever it is, but don't trust me. Yes. Prove it. If I say something, use it, try it, and if it works for you, great. Yeah. If it doesn't work for you, don't use it. That's but it. learn it properly and then use it and see whether it works or not. Absolutely. All right, so let's just go back to the chart real quick to cap this one off. Given the fact that what's happening with this one, obviously there's been huge volume come through here. Now, if that That's volume, massive. you think about that, volume's coming through in this congestion Price doesn't want to go on with it. That's telling me that you know someone's offloading. Is that an off-market transfer to offload stock from a big insto? Absolutely. I'm thinking what offloading. Is? That's a selling because mm. with price not going on with it, mm. that's telling you, hey, it's struggling. That's a big sell order coming through. We're going to see a dip down. And if we go to the monthly chart just to see where we could go, I think the next level is $2.83. We've Quite seen, yep. yeah, huge support through there. So just whilst you want to keep an eye on this one, just uh, stay away for now for that next opportunity for that stock to turn to the upside. But anyway, thank you for watching this edition of Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. Remember to tune in to the live Australian stock market show on YouTube from 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. To find us, just type Wealth Within Live in the YouTube search. And remember to have your phone ready to call in live to speak to us so we can answer your questions. The number is 03-9290-9988. Or you can email into the show right now by sending your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now, if you want a copy of Dale's first book, you can still get it for free. You just have to pay the shipping. You can order it from our homepage, wealthwithin.com.au. And I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and thank you, Dale, very much today for your excellent comments. Oh, well, hopefully they're excellent anyway, but it's my pleasure anyway, Phil, and, and well done for that. I really did like the stocks that you have, but I look forward to seeing everybody on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube. And Tuesday is the date it's on. But anyway, thanks for watching. All right. Thank you very much, Dale. And thank you all again for watching. For now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading. <laughs>